For eight years, Mark and Faye Leveson have been desperately searching for their son. Matthew was a happy and carefree 20-year-old when he went missing after leaving a nightclub in 2007. His much older boyfriend at the time, Michael Atkins, was tried for his murder, but acquitted by a jury after five days of deliberations. But this isn't your usual murder mystery. There was no body, no blood, no weapon. There are, however, plenty of lies. And there was one crucial piece of evidence the jury never got to hear. And for Mark and Faye, it's been a long and painful search for justice and their son. So what are we doing here? Well, we're looking for spots here where there's a clearing, where you can stick the ground and bury your body in, in softy soil and get out again quickly. Uh, this is a duty no parent should ever have to perform. But ahead of us, there's a depression in the ground. Mark and Faye Leveson are searching for the body of their son, Matthew. Is this a, a grave that's compressed over eight years? It's a macabre situation you find yourself in. Well, you are. You're thinking like a killer. You have to. How would I dispose of a hide a body? Mm. That's what we're trying to do. Matthew Leveson was 20 years old. He was a happy, friendly young man, last seen outside a nightclub in 2007. Matthew's body has never been found. But police believe he was murdered and buried, most likely, in Sydney's Royal National Park. It's a vast area of wild bushland. Can I give you? So that's sort of soil you can move? You can, that, that's movable. But for the past eight long years, Mark and Faye have come here most weekends to search for the remains of their son. When you stand in here, what feelings do you get knowing that, that it is likely that Matt's in here somewhere? Sick. I feel so sick because I think we could be standing right next to him. And the hardest part about it is Matt as a kid didn't like the dark. He always had to have a night light on for him. And now he's out in the dark, in the elements, rotting. You just need the smallest of clues, don't you? That can break it. One that can break it. One little thing could do it, that's yeah. all. Yeah. And we know who can provide that. Mark and Faye are talking about Michael Peter Atkins, Matt's much older partner and the last known person to see him alive. I sent him a text to say, you know, where are you, whatever. And I didn't really worry about it too much because he doesn't work on Mondays. Atkins, an electrician and a martial arts expert, was charged with Matt's murder in 2008, but acquitted by the jury. Did you murder Matt Levison? However, Faye and Mark believe Atkins could help them in the search for answers. Help he has never offered. We see a funeral and envy those people. We think, you lucky buggers. At least they can bury their loved one, put the loved one to rest. Mm -hmm. We can't do that for Matt. We've got no remains, no bodies, so we can't lay him to rest like every person deserves. An inquest into Matt's disappearance will resume soon. But New South Wales Homicide Squad Commander Mick Willing has no doubt he is dead. We do believe that Matthew was murdered around uh, sometime after 4 a.m. in the morning uh, on the Sunday, the, uh, the 23rd of September 2007. And you do believe that he was murdered, that he hasn't simply disappeared? That's our view, yes. It's a horrible statement. Mark and Faye Leveson wear their grief on their skin. So I can't give up looking for him. It yes. shouldn't be their problem. And this is our result. It's always too soon to quit. And that's a constant reminder for it you, isn't it? certainly is. Inspiration there, yes, right on your arm. Mm. Matt's sexuality was never a secret in the family. We knew. We knew since he was it four years old. It wasn't a shock. We, we, we knew. Yeah. We don't yes. care. Mm. It doesn't change who he is. No. no problem, right? But for Mark and Faye, it was his choice of partner that alarmed them. When Matt first brought him home. What was your impression of Atkins? Along came this chap who looked like Matt's father. Uh, I'm 57 years old now, and uh, he's only a few years younger than me. But we thought, well, look, it's Matt's choice, so that's, that's his partner. And How big was the age gap? 23 years. 23 years. 
All Mark and Faye want is for Michael Atkins to explain the many lies and inconsistencies in his story and police interviews, 29 in all. Lies that begin within hours of the last time Matt is ever seen alive, walking out of Ark Nightclub in Sydney in the early hours of Sunday morning, the 23rd of September, 2007, with Michael Atkins. It's clear from Matt's last text messages to a friend that he and Atkins are having a fight. It's the last anyone will ever hear from Matt. What happened on Sunday? What time did you wake up? Uh, in the afternoon sometime, about two o'clock or something. Two or three. And then we sort of just had, you know, lazy Sunday afternoon, really. Um, I fell asleep. I was lounge, you know, watching sort of TV and woke up a little while later and he wasn't at home. So I sent him a text and said, you know, where are you or whatever. And I find it very strange that the, none of the stories have been the same. They've all been different. A few days after Matt is reported missing, his car is found abandoned at a well-known gay pickup spot. It's locked and has been wiped of fingerprints. Is there anything you can say about that? Don't think so. Is there any thing that comes to mind uh, when we tell you that we've located his car at Waratah Oval? Not really. But the car, which they've kept for all these years, will prove to be a treasure trove of evidence. When police open up the boot, there's not much to be found in here at all, Correct. which was unusual, why? Well, the police didn't know they were look, uh, it was a missing boombox. They just saw an empty open boot. So when Matt had the car, it was yes. pretty much full. It was a, a, a giant speaker or Correct, a subwoofer right. in the yeah. boot. It filled two thirds of the boot space. Right. Shredded wires suggest the speaker was ripped out quickly. And when the boot is searched further, police find something else. A receipt from Bunnings Hardware for a heavy digging mattock and a roll of gaffer tape. Bought on the day Matt disappeared. Early Sunday afternoon, Michael Atkins is not asleep in his bed at home, as he told police. He's walking into Bunnings. Ten minutes later, he's standing at the cash register, his purchases in hand, the matic and the gaffer tape. He pays in cash. He leaves the store, carrying the matic in his left hand. But when police interview Atkins, he denies going to Bunnings or buying the mattock and tape. Only later, caught in the lie, does he offer another lie to Mark and Faye. He claimed at one point they were building a vegetable patch in the unit block they lived in. Um, the unit block manager was testified there was never applications for that, uh, there was little space for that, so no, that was a, another, another lie. A tool like that for a veggie patch in your backyard. Yeah, yes. I mean, it is yeah. entirely unbelievable. Exactly. Mm. Has that pick ever been found? No. The gaffer tape? No. no. Do you need such a heavy duty garden tool such as that to tend to your veggie patch in your backyard? Well, you know, that's a matter for a court and a matter for the person who purchased that mattock. Does that seem incredibly curious to you, that answer of his? Well, we're suspicious on a whole range of fronts and uh, again, that's a matter for the court to work out. I have a search warrant to search these premises. When police search Atkins' unit, there's no sign of the pick or the tape. And I'll just explain to you that we're looking for a, a pair of white joggers, a mattock, and a roll of tape. Are they the shoes you wore out on Saturday night? Atkins' clothes and shoes, as well as mats from their Saturday night out, are never recovered. But something else is. Another receipt this time for a new pair of shoes purchased by Atkins on Monday, the day after Matt disappeared. Why would he need new shoes? No one knows. And but those shoes, have they ever turned no, up the original pair? No, told the police they were in the laundry, the police going to the laundry, they're not there. Well, what do you think you did with them, Michael? Don't know. I don't know. I think it's Matt's. In the garage below the unit, which Matt and Atkins share, police find the missing boombox. Michael Atkins' car is also taken away for forensic examination. Hidden under the carpet in the floor well is Matt's phone. Atkins has had it 
all along. So he, send, he sends 19 text messages to Matt's phone, mm. asking him where, where he is. I miss you, I'm concerned yeah. for you. Mm. But all the time, the phone's in his car. He knew where the phone was. It's in his car, hidden under the carpet. Do you know where his body is? Well, this is not the In 2008, Michael Atkins was charged with Matthew Levison's murder. Are you denying it? I'm not saying anything. But he didn't take the stand at his trial and so never had to answer questions about his actions. Do you understand the situation the family's going through? Yes. And there was one crucial piece of evidence the jury never heard. They were never told that Michael Atkins lied to police about going to Bunnings and buying the Maddock and Gaffer tape. Atkins is asked by the police, it's our belief that at about 12.20 on Sunday afternoon you went to Bunnings Warehouse and you were the person who purchased that pick, the Matic, and gaffer tape. Is there anything you wish to say about that? He answers, I don't think it was me. Police say, who do you think it could be? He says, I don't know. Are you maintaining that the only place you went to on Sunday was a walk through the mall? He says, I think so, yes, yeah. Yeah. Did you purchase a pick and gaffer tape from Bunnings about 12.20 on Sunday afternoon? Atkins says, no, I don't think so. But that's a lie, isn't it? It's a lie. Bold-faced lie. Bold-faced lie. If they knew about the denial, do you think the jury's verdict would have been different? Oh, for sure. How could not be? How could you see a person deny no. that that's you on, on the video? Quite clearly. It's more proof to his character, how poor his character really is. Then we sort of came home. That lie was suppressed because the judge ruled police didn't properly warn Atkins that he was a suspect before the interview. What, what do you believe happened to him? Michael Atkins was found not guilty and walked from the court a free man. Why have police stuck with this case? Um, you know, it, it's an important case. Um, here you've got a, a loving family who have uh, lost their 20-year-old son who had his whole life to live for. And, you know, we're doing whatever we can to give them the answers that they deserve. So this first spot was to take a few quick hits at the ground to see if the soil moves or not. The Levisons are always looking for new places where Matt's body might be buried. It's a grim search and sometimes a shocking one. Well, what have we found? <laughs> what is that? Oh, shit. There's sheep there or something. Oh, is it sheep. sheep. Nothing in it there, is there? Plain cheese, isn't it? For what reason? What's in this clump of... Is that... This looks like a roof, doesn't it? No, it's a bone. <gasps> There you go. Now, we tell police, too, that we would never disturb a crime scene. So, no. having found that, our call now is to police. The bones will prove to be those of an animal, possibly a wombat. Rounded. What do you see, Faye? That near the sheet. For Mark and Faye, it's a reminder of what this dense bush may yet hold. That's... You OK? See? This bush has all sorts of secrets, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Holds many secrets, yeah. a lot of secrets. Michael Atkins now lives in Brisbane with another young man, barely half his age, and still haunts the party scene. He thinks he can just walk away, move into in, interstate and live another life like nothing's happened. But one day it's going to catch up to him. The truth's going to come out one way or the other. The truth is going to come out. Yeah. 